call us what you will, but we won't take orders. Do you think we do this for fun? It's not like we take pleasure from killing. I don't want to work or die for nothing. Hello and welcome to Hunter Hunter 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the Hunter Hunter world. And today we are going to be diving into the former patriarch of the world's most famous assassin family, Zeno Zoldic. Zeno Zoldic is a 67 year old assassin who's best physically characterized by his hunched back and Fu Manchu mustache. However, despite his withered appearance, Zeno retains full control of his mental capacities and has been shown to be a brilliant tactician and is quite quick witted. He is also well known for his superbly calm persona and consistent pragmatism. In terms of his position within the Zoldic family, Zeno is the grandson of the somehow still alive Maha Zoldic and father of the current patriarch Silver Zoldic. However, as a Zoldic, Zeno was born into a life of pursuing the family business, having been trained in the traditional Zoldic art of assassination and going on to become a very notorious figure within the modern day world. Having led a superb career in which Zeno asserts that he has never once killed a person that he was not paid to eliminate. In fact, despite possessing the ability to kill without hesitation, Zeno goes to great lengths in order to ensure that no collateral damage occurs, and in the event that his actions do result in the injury of civilians, Zeno has showed a great sense of remorse. Furthermore, despite the fact that he is an assassin, generally a position that one would not advertise and would want to keep as secretive as possible, Zeno makes no effort to hide his identity, which was seen during a meeting of assassins where they started out by having everyone choose code names, and Zeno just chuckled as if it were some sort of game, and then went on to blatantly state his name, and then even provided his business card to one of his fellow assassins even promising a 30% industry discount. That is the kind of confidence Zeno has in his professional skills, which is a common trait amongst the Zoldic family who essentially live and operate in plain sight. During his long career, Zeno has also developed several key relationships and most notably appears to be on good, perhaps even friendly terms with Isaac Natterer, who despite looking roughly the same age as Zeno is actually well over a century old and has known Zeno ever since he was a mere baby. In fact, as he grew up, Zeno became one of the rare people in this world to witness the true power of Natterer, claiming that he was the only man who had ever fought his grandfather Maha and lived. In addition to this, Zeno himself stated that he and Netero have been thrown into combat on a number of occasions, although whether or not these were serious bouts triggered by an assassination request or simply sparring matches is unknown, but whatever the case, Zeno freely admits that his power does not even begin to equal that of Netero, and that during his long career, Netero has always gotten the better of him. In general though, Zeno also has high regard for the rest of the Zoldic family, showing a particular faith in the talent of his favored grandson, Killua. And in fact, Zeno's confidence in Killua is actually so great that he actively supports the autonomy of his grandson, allowing him to go on his various adventures with Gon and showed seemingly little concern for when Killua did finally remove Illumi's controlling needle from his brain. Although this confidence does not necessarily extend to the rest of the Zoldic family, with Miluki in particular being an example of a less than ideal assassin, and Zeno has described him as being both a genius Yes and an idiot. Other than that, Zeno's key point of interaction within the series is with his son, Silva, whose ability Zeno trusts implicitly and whom often accompanies him on particularly important contracts, such as during the York New Arc, where they were both hired by the 10 Dons in order to exterminate the Phantom Troop. But the primary engagement faced by Zeno and Silva would be coming into contact with the leader of the Phantom Troop, Crowley Lucifer, which gave us a nice glimpse of the true power of Zeno Zoldic. Zeno's mastery of the art forms of assassination and Nen have led him to acquiring highly enviable and terrifying level strength. During the fight, Zeno was shown to be capable of superhuman speed and power, and even demonstrated a potential superiority to Krollo in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In the realm of Nen specifically, Zeno is a transmuter, which is the traditional Nen class bestowed upon members of the Zoldic family born with white hair. Not only that, but Zeno may actually be one of, if not the finest transmuter introduced within the series thus far. His skill within this Nen class has led to a wide variety of Hatsu, based Based on transmuting his aura to mimic the physical properties of a dragon, which is capable of great offensive use, but it can also serve as transport, with Zeno literally being able to ride atop his dragon-shaped aura. However, aside from his natural affinity, Zeno also possesses great skill in the area of emission, being capable of producing an aura construct, such as his trademark dragon, that can remain in existence even when they are several kilometers away from him. Zeno's skill in pure emission also allows him to craft a blast of aura, very similar in nature to a Dragon Ball-like key-based attack, which is a pretty phenomenal move in the world of Hunter Hunter, but in addition to that, after exerting such a large quantity of aura, Zeno didn't appear tired in the slightest, suggesting that he possesses a gargantuan scale of aura reserves. Another great indicator of Zeno's profound mastery of Nen is the fact that he can project his N to a radius of 100 meters and has even stated that if he so desired, he could extend that radius to 300 meters, although he did add that doing so would get quite tiring. Still, for some comparison, a general master of Nen is expected to only be able to produce a Nen 
that could cover a 50 meter radius. And with all of this in mind, Xena was able to very effectively combat Krollo in York New City. Although the leader of the Phantom Troop did prove to be a formidable foe, prompting Xeno to put himself in a position to be sacrificed in order to ensure Krollo's death. However, at the last second, both Xeno and Krollo were saved by a call from Illumi, informing them that his assassination of the 10 Mafia Dons was successful, which nullified the contract to kill Krollo. Despite this, Krollo felt an inclination to continue the skirmish, to which Xeno blatantly refused, citing one of his most important mantras that the Zoldic family, neither the kills nor risks their life for fun. As some form of compensation, Krollo at the very least posed the question to Xeno of which of them would win in a one-on-one -on -one bout. To which Xeno confidently replied that of course he would, although he did add the caveat that if Krollo were truly trying to kill him, then that may well be a different story. Now this is relevant because it goes to show Xeno's earned mastery of Nen combat, as he was able to very accurately deduce that Krollo's true intentions during the battle had been to attempt to steal Xeno's abilities rather than to fight seriously. Not only that, but Xeno near instantaneously managed to figure out that Krollo required at least four or five conditions in order to activate his thievery power, and as a result, Xeno was hyper aware of Krollo's minute actions during the battle. Following this, Xeno's Hansu would once again be put on display much, much later in the series during the final stages of the Chimera Antarch after Isaac Netero contracted him to assist the extermination squad, with Xeno's role being to separate the royal guards from the Chimera and King Meruem with minimal human casualties. This was accomplished by invading the palace from above using Dragon Head, and then causing mass amounts of chaos by invoking Dragon Dive, a technique that combines transmutation and emission to split Xeno's dragon into hundreds of smaller aura dragons, resulting in a shower of destruction raining upon the target. Although despite the mission's goal to be conducted with minimal human casualties, you know, ideally no human casualties, the only casualty caused by Dragon Dive would in fact be a human by the name of Komugi. In fact, when Xeno encountered Komugi being cradled in the arms of the Chimera Ant King, he could do nothing but stand and observe the scene, feeling that intruding upon this moment, a moment in which he was greatly responsible for, would result in a loss of humanity within him. And this is another one of those rare situations in which, despite his not exactly empathetic profession, Zeno has shown that he holds his own strong moral standards. He was not paid to kill Komugi, which if not for the healing abilities of the King's Royal Guard, he most certainly would have, and so he felt his action here as something of a betrayal of not just his industry, but his own character. Despite this, the primary goal of Dragon Dive had been to sow chaos amongst the palace, which proved to be highly successful, partially due to Komugi being injured actually, and Xeno did successfully separate the king from his guards, although not before catching a glimpse of the king's true power, as in a split second of distraction, Meruem was able to casually position himself right behind Xeno and Netero. And in that moment, it became clear that the king was not a being that Xeno could ever hope to stand up to, despite his absurd power, experience, and sheer mastery of the art of Nen. Luckily, Xeno had not been contracted to fight the king, and the final phase of his job was to transport Netero and Meruem to a battlefield far, far away from potential human casualties upon the back of his Nen dragon. With this finished, Xeno briefly encountered his grandson Killua, who was part of the extermination team. Knowing that he and Gon were headed for the same scene that he had just laid his eyes upon, Xeno simply stayed that his job here was done and to judge what was happening inside for themselves. However, before being able to leave, Xeno was challenged by another Chimera Ant by the name of Chitu. Although Xeno, still grappling with the idea that he may have killed an innocent bystander for the first time in his long career, as well as the general fact that he does not kill for fun, declined Chitu's less than grand invitation. And the Chimera Ant would go on to be killed in a single punch by Silva, who had arrived to come and pick Xeno up. Rather interestingly, Xeno did not show the same level or in fact any remorse for the loss of Chitu's life in this engagement, stating to Silva that he really did not care whether he left him alive or not. And from here, Xeno presumably returned to the Zoltic estate and has unfortunately not made any further appearances in the series thus far. Some more fun facts about Xeno. Xeno is the only character in the entire series who has officially broken the fourth wall and actually started talking to the readers. This occurred during the palace invasion portion of the Chimera Antarch, when he began to vaguely explain the past of Isaac Netero, as well as his abilities. Generally on his garb, Xeno is seen wearing one of two statements that read either a killer day or never retire respectively, proudly portraying his philosophy in regards to his profession. And finally, a truly useless fact, in Hunter Hunter, the Nightmare of Zoldic musical, the role of Xeno was played by Masashi Nita, who as far as I can tell is best known for the role of, you guessed it, Xeno Zoldic in Hunter Hunter, the Nightmare of Zoldic musical. But that pretty much does it for Xeno. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. 
And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigan re takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured on the next Hunter x Hunter 101. What role do you think Killua and if possible the rest of the Zoldic clan will play in the upcoming arc? So for the whole succession war dark continent business, I think we know who will be following from the Zoldic family and it's not going to be Killua. He's just off doing his own thing with Aluka and I really don't think he's going to return. But in the meantime, we do have Illumi and Kalato who are currently members of the Phantom Troop who seem poised to be heavily involved. Although I highly doubt that things are going to work out particularly well for either of them. Do you watch Yu Yu Hakusho? Because they have the same creator. So yes, I have seen and read Yu Yu Hakusho, although it's not because Togashi created them both. I actually read Yu Yu Hakusho ages before I got into Hunter x Hunter, and I thought it was a lot of fun, even if it was a bit more of, you know, a standard shonen. To be fair though, most series that were being published in the early 90s have that feel about them, and Yu Yu Hakusho does have this nice nostalgic charm about it as a result. Are you an alien from Mars? No, no I am not. I'm an alien from Jupiter actually, and I've come to Earth because it kind of sucks living on a planet that doesn't really have a solid surface. Also, the anime on Jupiter, pure garbage, absolute trash. 